I don't know if I ever decided it. I just knew it was in me that it's what I was going to do. <laughs> um, I can't, my childhood was here with my grandparents, my sisters, they worked in the hay field. I, I couldn't imagine another, another life for myself, quite honestly. I didn't know anything else and I wouldn't have it any other way. Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister. And I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversation podcast, where we talk about all things related to ranching by connecting you to peer ranchers and industry leaders to improve the profitability of your operation and your lifestyle. Now, if you are looking for a community of ranchers, sign up for my monthly Rancher Mind events. Rancher Mind events are mastermind events for ranchers. You join a Zoom link and you sit down and have a conversation with other ranchers and industry leaders about specific topics that help you improve your operation and face the challenges that we face as an industry as a whole. Now, if you want immediate ranch management advice, go to my website, casualcattleconversations.com slash newsletter and sign up. When you sign up, I will send you a free PDF with 22 ranch management tips from the ranching gurus who have been on my show and poured out their knowledge for all to hear. With that, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram by following Cattle Convos. You can connect with me there or you can go to my website, casualcattleconversations.com to find anything you may need. I'm excited to meet you. Okay, so thank you for being on the show today. I am excited to have you both on here and to share about your operation and this mother-daughter dynamic duo that you have going on or that I've heard about. But to start off, I want to kind of start off with a fun or unique question. So I would like each of you to share three words that describe your operation. Uh, cows, uh, water, and uh, challenges. Cows being black Angus, um, they seem to have less health issues when it comes to the udders and the pink eye. Uh, the water, we have a river that runs by the ranch, a pond, a lake, and several creeks. So water isn't an issue. Um, challenges are the beavers, keep um, damming up the lake so it can't drain, so it floods back on the meadows. Um, trees fall on the fences can be a challenge. Cricks flood out because they seem to move a lot of sand where we do live in the sand hills. So that's some of the challenges that I seem to deal with every day or both of us. <laughs> um, for my three words, I, I guess mom kind of touched on some of it with uh, productivity. I think our ranch for as small as it is, it's not one of the bigger ranches in the area, but I think that it does hold its own with a lot of alfalfa. We were lucky enough to get two to three cuttings off of alfalfa, sometimes after growth on the meadows for grazing. Um, my second word, I guess I chose um, forgiving. In the drought years such as this, the, the meadows really seem to carry us rather than our, our upland hay. And we're, we can get into those low areas that we normally can't get into in wet or average years. And it, it makes feed maybe not the best, but it does do something for us. And for my final word, I guess I think of, when I think of this place, I always think of the legacy that it holds, what we want to continue on in the further generations, what my grandpa started and um, how we want to carry on his legacy and our own. Wow. Those are all great answers. And that makes me excited to continue asking you more questions throughout this interview process. And Jody, since you kind of ended with legacy, I'd really like to hear the history of your ranch. You said, you know, what your grandpa started. So what is the history of your operation? How did that start and how has that progressed today? I'll let her answer that one. <laughs> um, our um, legacy started my dad when he got married he lived north of atkinson nebraska and uh, then farming started to come into that area and he did not want to be a farmer his dream was being a rancher this ranch came up for sale in about 1953 and so 
I was two years old when we moved here. I'm the only daughter of four brothers. And um, we uh, moved on the ranch here. And I remember a lot of willows. There wasn't much for meadows as I was growing up. Um, we did a lot of work of cleaning the willows off the meadows to make the meadows bigger. And then my dad rented a lot of pasture locally throughout the years. And then he managed to buy um, some adjoining acres, adjoining the ranch. He managed to buy that to make our ranch bigger. And then later on in the 80s, he bought some land over at Mills, Nebraska, which uh, carries probably about 65 to 70 head of cows. And um, then he passed away. Then he, he asked me to come back to the ranch and help him, even though I had other jobs working at Sale Barn and Bassett and Sale Barn Atkinson, and I worked part-time at a welding shop. And so he asked me to come back to the ranch because I was already helping him part-time and we had I had cattle here also. And so I came back and um, from there, we just kind of kept expanding the ranch. And then when he passed away in 2003, the rent or the land that we was renting for 45 years plus came up for sale. And um, my mom was still here and we took care of her also. And um, I had the opportunity to buy some of that land. So I purchased it. And then Jody had the opportunity to buy part of it also. So she bought some of the acres too. And uh, I expanded our ranch. And um, from there, we just kind of looked for ways to make the ranch better. We did a lot of different things in cross fencing, putting in water lines, um, rotational grazing. And uh, my dad's dream was to make the ranch better and improve it. So I have, we've worked very hard trying to make the meadows larger. So that's some of the ways that you know, we've, we're trying to improve the ranch from generation to generation. That's one of our goals. Well, I love to hear that. And I think improvement is key to being able to pass it down to the next generation. So Jody, what has your involvement looked like on the ranch? I mean, from growing up to when did you decide to come back and continue living out this lifestyle for yourself in this business? I don't know if I ever decided it. I just knew it was in me that it's what I was going to do. <laughs> um, I can't, my childhood was here with my grandparents, my sisters, they worked in the hay field. I, I couldn't imagine another, another life for myself, quite honestly. I didn't know anything else and I wouldn't have it any other way. So is it just you two on the operation right now? Or what does this look like from a labor standpoint, from a health standpoint? What does that kind of look like for you as you manage this? You're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is just us. Like we have family come like for um, branding and my, my fiance, he'll come down uh, to help us do some more cattle work, the bigger days of like AIing and bringing cattle home from grass or taking them out to grass. We're actually in the process of combining both of our operations, which is a challenge within itself. But for the most part, it's just her and I, uh, we just got done putting up a hay quarter over the weekend. So <laughs> it's just us. <laughs> hey folks, let's hear from our friends at Neogen. You are working to preserve the ground for the next generation. Shouldn't your cow herd be built for the future too? Neogen is the industry leader in beef cattle genomic testing. They are proud to have brought the first genomic profile to the market, and this is called Igenity Beef. Igenity Beef is a genomic test that provides commercial cattle producers easy to understand data to make genomic selections to advance their herd with each generation. Igenity Beef is designed for crossbred commercial cattle, utilizing the herd's very own DNA to predict genetic merit 
in your herd. Igenity Beef provides 17 critical traits on a 1 through 10 scale that aids in selection and management of commercial females and provide marketing opportunities to build your herd for the next generation. To learn more about how Igenity Beef can aid you in selection, management, and marketing opportunities of each calf crop and your herd, go to neogen.com or call 877-443-6489. Again, that is neogen.com. You know, what would you say has been, you know, there's challenges every day in ranching. I mean, so it's hard to pick one. But what would you say are some of those big challenges you faced with some of these generational transitions and making these transitions on your ranch? What are some of those main challenges that you've overcome together? One of the main challenges when my dad passed away in 2003, we put up haystacks with a farmhand loader and a 42 foot dump rake. And I had to change that up operation because I know I knew and my dad informed me that I couldn't run that farmhand because he freehanded put up the stacks. So it was a challenge to go from haystacks to acquiring a baler, brakes and the equipment we needed to switch, make that transition and to switch over to a different way of haying that I grew up with. But I never knew how to run a baler but it's all things that with a little time and a few mistakes here and there that we managed to get through it. Well, awesome. Jody, what would you say is, you know, one of the challenges that you two have worked through and overcome together with these transitions? Um, As far as the transitions between uh, one generation to the next, what for our, for us on our end, our experience, would, um, I guess, understanding each other's roles on like knowing each other's strengths and weaknesses where maybe I might not be good at one thing and she might be good at it and just reversing that and finding where we both can work and be productive at the same time. Okay. So Correct me if I'm wrong, but you two, you know, started with a commercial operation, but are slowly transitioning into the seed stock world, correct? Yep. So what kind of sparked that idea to transition from commercial to the registered industry? I guess for me, it started out with um, realizing there was a lot of bulls out there that I I liked, but I couldn't afford. And then I saw so many, maybe not so great bulls sell way above what I would have thought I would have paid for in my own personal thought. And I'm not trying to offend any, anybody or anything, but I just thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to just create it yourself? And I was fortunate enough to get my hands on some registered first calvers. And it just kind of grew from there. I had a loan from FSA to expand my cow herd. And I used that loan and I took advantage of the low cattle market during that fall. And I, I did get some registered females. I got, um, we started working on some AI. We got that going and it's, it's been a really fun process. It hasn't, hasn't been easy learning everything because once I got one thing figured out I find out I sure don't (laughs) and but it's been fun and it's really fulfilling to see your home raised bull out in the pasture breeding your own cows. So with that do you have any like mentors that you specifically look to or how have what resources have you used or people have you gone to to help you make that transition because it is quite the change and can be a challenge in itself. I um, I guess we spoke to Corey Austrian a lot. That's where I got my first set of females from. Um, a lot of what I've learned is just being a, being a cattleman, just throughout the years of purchasing cattle, you kind of know some, some things and maybe you sometimes don't know a lot when, you, when the tables are turned and you become a, a producer for, for registered cattle. But, um, you know, we just... A lot of reading online is what I've done 
I've spoke to a lot of maybe people my age too as well to see what their thoughts were. Older people, I guess, local local people see what they look for in bulls and maybe what they look for in females, going to sales, seeing people and meeting them and discussing all ideas and thoughts with them has been a has been a lot of help. Well, that's exciting. So with that, are you really, I mean, what are your dreams on like the registered side of it? What are your dreams for your operation as you continue to grow? For the registered cows, um, you know, we run them just like um, we do the commercial. They don't get special treatment. They get cold the same and they, you know, that's, that's how you should have your, your bulls and your, um, your animals that you're using to breed. Like you, you shouldn't have them be special treated just because they're registered. So we don't do that. Um, I guess the goals would be to, to continue that and to keep growing the registered herd. And I don't, I don't know if we've ever really want to uh, sell registered bulls. That's, there's a lot of people who do sell registered bulls out there and some are registered and some are and um, that's, there's just too much competition and there's really good operations out there as well. If anything, I think it would be cool to sell um, maybe some registered females, an elite group of registered females that have had generations that have gone through the uh, all the cuts. They've been treated just the same as a commercial cow. That's what the commercial producer wants. Okay. So I kind of want to ask, hear your mom's perspective on this, just as the older generation on the ranch, what has it been like to see your daughter making these changes and be a part of these changes that she's really excited about? I'm excited for her to make the changes. We do make decisions together here and we discuss it, you know, the issues, the pros and cons of making decisions. And um, I believe that you have to let the younger generation have an input and a say to make the next, you know, so the next generation, which would be her, carry on. Cause you know, nothing set in stone that it has to be done this way because this is the way we did it all these years. So I believe that there's changes that are good in every operation and you've got to let the next generation have their say because there's changes. I mean, nothing stays the same. Absolutely. So how have you two worked together to navigate you know, shifting that decision-making process um, and making that transition where two of you are making decisions. I mean, what did that kind of look like um, from when Jody came back to now? Um, not sure how to answer that. <laughs> you knew it's I think maybe there were some growing pains when I was younger coming out of college and I, that's with any operation. Um, now that I'm older, uh, nine times out of 10, we're probably making the same decision. <laughs> like, I mean, I've learned from her. I've, I mean, this is where I've grown up. I know how, like we, when we sort cattle, it's just like butter. Um, we can get more work done with just the two of us than a crew out there in the crowd. And <laughs> I always feel more comfortable with just the two of us. <laughs> well, when you have a system that, that works, that's important to use it. <laughs> Well, is there um, anything else you want to add? Or I guess, what are you excited about for the future of the beef industry? Well, for me, the future, I guess, it's been pretty grim for beef producers <laughs> lately. But during the pandemic, I think a lot of consumers um, realized how important it is to purchase your meat directly from a producer, the rancher themselves, like it's out there, maybe some didn't realize that they had the opportunity or the ability to do so, but they can do that and they know where it's coming from. And I guess that was a little glimmer of hope for um, beef producers and ranchers. And a lot of people was able to find another avenue 
to sell their beef and market directly to the consumer without having to go through the middleman. Um, so I guess, I guess that's what's kind of exciting to me looking forward into the future. Maybe um, people will start realizing that and it'll, not, it'll be more of a trend to go directly to um, from the rancher to the consumer. I mean, how cool is it that we take an animal that eats grass and turn it into a sustainable protein for the world? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's pretty amazing. I'm always in awe over that every day. And I think more and more people are starting to see that as well. Well, awesome. Do you have anything else you want to add or any last comments for uh, those listening who are either already in the beef industry or interested in learning more about it? Um, I, we're just happy to, to speak with you today. And um, I, I think that getting the word out there and discussing more and more with people to show them that, um, you know, it's, it's not a we're not in it to make money. We're in it because we love the land and we love the animals. Do you have anything? Well, I just feel like, you know, yeah, we love the animals. We're in it because we're trying to carry the next generation on. And uh, my thoughts are also, if there's any women out there that want to get into ranching or whatever, follow your dreams, follow your heart and go for it. Well, awesome. Thank you very much for being on the show today. I love all of that. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.